Time for chapter three of The Thief of Always by Clive Barker. My laundry hamper is right where I usually put my feet. All right. Chapter three, Pleasure and the Worm. What a fine thing it would be, Harvey thought, to build a place like this to drive its foundations deep into the earth, to lay its floors, to hoist its walls, to say, where there was nothing, I raised the house. That would be a very fine thing. It wasn't a puffed-up peacock of a place, either. There were no marble steps, no fluted columns. It was a proud house, certainly. But there was nothing wrong with that. It had much to be proud of. It stood four stories high, and boasted more than Harvey could really count, and boasted more windows than Harvey could readily count. Its porch was wide, as were the steps that led up to its carved front door. Its slated roofs were steep and crowned with magnificent chimneys and lightning rods. Its highest point, however, was neither a chimney nor a lightning rod, but a large and elaborate, an elaborately wrought weather vane, which Harvey was peering up at when he heard the front door open and a voice say, Harvey Swick, as I live and breathe. He looked down the weather vane's white silhouette, still behind his eyes, and there, on the porch, stood a woman who made his grandmother, the oldest person he knew, look young. She had a face like a rolled-up ball of cobwebs, from which her hair, which could also have been spider's work, fell in wispy abundance. Her eyes were tiny, her mouth tight, her hands gnarled, her voice, however, was melodious, and its words welcoming. "'I thought maybe you decided not to come,' she said picking up a basket of freshly cut flowers she'd left on the step, which would have been a pity. Come in. There's food on the table. You must be famished. I can't stay long, Harvey said. You must do whatever you wish, came the reply. I'm Mrs. Griffin, by the way. Yes, Rick just mentioned you. I hope he didn't bend your ear too much. He loves the sound of his own voice, that and his reflection. Harvey had climbed the porch steps by now and stopped in front of the open door. This was the moment... This was a moment of decision, he knew, though he wasn't quite certain why. Step inside, Mrs. Griffin said, brushing a spider hair back from her furrowed brow. But Harvey still hesitated, and he might have turned away and never stepped inside the house, except that he heard a boy's voice yelling, I gotcha, I gotcha, followed by uproarious laughter. Wendell, Mrs. Griffin said, are you chasing the cats again? The sound of laughter grew even louder, and it was so full of good humor that Harvey stepped cl- stepped over the threshold and into the house just so he could see the face of its owner. He got a, he only got a brief look. A goofy, bespectacled face appeared for a moment at the other end of the hallway. Then a piebald cat dashed between the boy's legs, and he was off, yelling and laughing again. He is such a crazy boy, Mrs. Griffin said. But all the cats love him. The house was more wonderful inside than out. Even on the short journey to the kitchen, Harvey glimpsed enough to know that this was a place built for games, chases, and adventures. It was a maze in which no two doors were alike. It was a treasure house where some notorious pirate had hidden his blood-stained booty. It was a resting place for carpets flown by gins and boxes sealed before the flood, where the eggs of beasts that the earth had lost were wrapped and waiting for the sun's heat to hatch them. It's perfect. Harvey murmured to himself. Mrs. Griffin caught his words. Nothing's perfect, she replied. Why not? Because time passes, she went on, staring down at the flowers she'd cut. And the beetle and the worm find their way into everything sooner or later. Hearing this, Harvey wondered what grief it was Mrs. Griffin had known or seen to make her so mournful. I'm sorry, she said, covering her melancholy with a tiny smile. You didn't didn't come here to listen to my dirges. You came here to enjoy yourself, didn't you? I guess I did, Harvey said. So let me tempt you with some treats. Harvey sat himself down on the kitchen table, and within sixty seconds Mrs. Griffin had set a dozen plates of food in front of him. Hamburgers, hot dogs, and fried chicken, mounds of buttered potatoes, apple, cherry, and mud pies, ice cream and whipped cream, grapes, tangerines, and a plate full of fruits he couldn't even name. He set to eating with gusto, and was devouring his second slice of pie when a freckled girl with long, frizzy blonde hair and huge blue eyes ambled in. "'You must be Harvey,' she said. "'How did you know?' "'Wendell told me. How did he know?' she shrugged. "'He just heard. I'm Lulu, by the way.' 
Did you just arrive? No, I've been here for ages, longer than Wendell, but not as long as Mrs. Griffin. Nobody's been here as long as she has, isn't that right? Almost, said Mrs. Griffin, a little mysteriously. Do you want something to eat, sweetie? Lulu shook her head. No, thanks. I haven't got much of an appetite at the moment. She nevertheless sat down opposite Harvey, stuck her thumb into a mud pie, and licked it clean. Who invited Who invited you here, she asked. A guy called Rictus? Oh, yeah, the one with the grin. That's him. He's got a sister and two brothers, she went on. You've met them? Not all of them, Lulu admitted. They keep, themse they keep themselves to themselves, but you'll meet one or two of them sooner or later. I... I don't think I'll be staying, Harvey said. I mean, my mom and dad don't even know I'm here. Sure they do, Lulu replied. They just didn't tell you about it, this confused Harvey, and he said so. Call your mom and dad, Lulu suggested. Ask them. Can I do that, he wondered. Of course you can, Mrs. Griffin replied. The phone's in the hallway. Carrying a spoonful of ice cream with him, Harvey went to the phone and dialed. At first, there was a whirring sound on the line, as though a wind were in the wires. Then it cleared, and he heard his mom say, Who is this? Before you start yelling, he began, Oh, honey, his mom cooed. Did you arrive? Arrive? You are at Holiday House, I hope. Yes, I am, but... Oh, good. I was worried maybe you'd lost your way. Do you like it there? You knew I was coming, Harvey said, catching Lulu's eye. I told you, she mouthed. Of course we knew, his mom went on. We invited Mr. Rictus to show you the place. You looked so sad, you poor lamb. We thought you needed a little fun. Really? said Harvey, astonished by this turn of events. We just want you to enjoy yourself, his mom went on. So stay as long as you want. What about school? he said. You deserve a little time off, came the reply. Don't worry about anything. Just have a good time. I will, mom. Bye, honey. Bye. Harvey came away from the conversation, shaking his head in amazement. You were right, he said to Lulu. They arranged everything. So now you don't have to feel guilty, said Lulu. Well, I guess I'll see you around later, huh? And with that, she ambled away. If you're finished eating, Mrs. Griffin said, I'll show you to your room. I'd like that. She duly led Harvey up the stairs. At the landing, basking on the sun-drenched windowsill, was a cat with fur the color of a cloudless sky. That's Blue Cat, Mrs. Griffin said. You saw Stew Cat playing with Wendell? I don't know where Clue Cat is, but he'll find you. He likes new guests. Do you have a lot of people coming here? Only children, very special children like you and Lulu and Wendell. Mr. Hood would, won't have just anybody. Who's Mr. Hood? The man who built...